with the extra point. This is Eric McKinney joined by Greg Katz. Greg, on Wednesday at USC's practice, that was the first day where we really saw some shuffling all along the offensive line. That was something that the coaches had talked about coming into spring ball that they were going to do a lot of. Took until practice 10, but boy, did they shuffle. Your reaction and your sort of takeaway to what happened, just specifically on the offensive line from that Wednesday practice. Well, you know, sometimes we can uh, have hyperbole over something, uh, and the offensive line has received such scrutiny. But the reality, from my perspective, is this uh, Andrew Millick uh, situation is potentially a big deal. And the reason it's a big deal is because uh, all indications are is that the uh, coaching staff, which would, of course, mean uh, uh, Clay McGuire uh, and Graham Harrell, uh, were really looking at Millick as being a backup center. He's been, he showed a lot of time at backup center, increased time, and they were moving Justin Dietrich to left guard and right guard, which tells me that they're serious about getting Dietrich in there. If for uh, hopefully knock on wood, it's not an ACL injury for Millick, but if it is, that that's going to affect uh, a lot of their juggling. It's going to affect uh, especially Justin Dietrich because what's going to happen if he's good enough to start at guard or he's the best option, you can't put him back on the bench uh, as a reserve center waiting for you know Brett Nealon to go down because now you're weakening two positions. So what what could transpire? is that if Millick is lost, there, there should be a line. If I was an offensive lineman, I'd say, hey, coach, give me a shot at center. Because the indications are that they want to really see Dietrich uh, get a real opportunity at guard. Yeah, you you sort of reference it, but but Andrew Millick, he goes down, uh, to, you know, to, in the second half of practice there was helped off the field, no no sense yet of what that injury was or, or how long it could, it could uh, keep him out for. But yeah, he was a guy that, that was getting more and more time. The coaches were obviously sort of pleased with how he was doing at center. And like you mentioned, that that let them move Justin Dietrich around a little bit. I, I came away from that Wednesday practice sort of as positive about the offensive line as, as we've been, as I've been about it this spring. And no, that doesn't mean, hey, everything's fixed, but it does mean that there were some glimpses in there. And I don't think it was coincidence that it's the day that they mix everybody up, that you get some increased play from some guys. Once you start shaking it up and letting guys go in different spots, things were going to go, I felt things were going to go one way or the other, right? It wasn't going to work and it could have been a train wreck with that, or guys were going to really step their games up when they were able to see Hey, I'm running with you know what whatever you were going to call the the first group uh, on Wednesday, and it, it was tough to tell kind of what was considered the first group because again, so many guys were kind of flipping and flopping. But uh, I counted I, I counted a dozen different kind of lineups with guys playing in in different spots, and, and some guys you know playing left tackle and right tackle, playing tackle and guard, and it's exactly what we heard from the coaches wanted to happen. I think it was interesting that Clay McGuire wanted to go sort of as long as he did looking at what everybody assumed would be the starters, all, all the returners coming back. And I do think it's a, it's a good thing that he got a true sense of kind of what those guys look like. Cause now you see, you know, if, if Andrew Voorhees goes out at left tackle and, and starts playing really well there, if Jonah Monheim gets in kind of with that first group and starts playing really well at tackle, you do have a baseline that these guys can now underperform or outperform. And I think we saw some of that on Wednesday. I wouldn't be surprised if, if you know, Thursday, Saturday, and, and the rest of spring ball, it's a lot of the same thing. And I also wouldn't be surprised, maybe we come out of the spring with a different sense uh, of the offensive line. And there really is a sense of maybe they can get something together, uh, finding those right pieces. Well, I, I think there's a lot of encouragement because I think, to be honest, I think we know what this offensive line looks like uh, from the past because it's basically the same guys coming back is it for Elijah Vera Tucker. So once you start mixing and matching and trying things, you know, uh, you could stumble onto a combination that says, you know, this is better than what we have. And I think better than what they have probably is something that uh, brings a lot of uh, uh, motivation to everybody except for maybe the guys who, what we have uh, that are starting, but that puts pressure on them to perform, to produce at a higher level. 
Now, maybe they're not capable of doing it. It's a possibility, but it keeps everybody on their toes. And I think from a perception standpoint for USC fans, they're trying. They're, they're, they, they know what they have. I think now, uh, basically, when you had that, that group from last year getting the first couple of weeks uh, with Cortland Ford at left tackle, it really gave Clay McGuire a chance to say, okay, so this is what I'm, I, I start off with. I need to know what I'm starting off with uh, based on my evaluation. And I think he did do that. And to his credit, maybe frustrating for fans, but they definitely have a plan, which is a good thing. And then they'll, uh, they'll see what happens the last two weeks. I think this is one of the benefits of having the spring game in the middle of spring practice. And I, I agree with Clay Helton when he says, you know, we can teach off this film because uh, players weren't trying to not get hurt or hold back because they still had another two weeks to go. So uh, I find it uh, intriguing to see what's, what, how it's all going to play out. And maybe it'll change in, you know, in August training camp. But, but for where we are today, uh, they're looking. They're definitely looking. And that Wednesday practice was without Liam Douglas, who, who had been, you know, going at, at backup guard and without Casey Collier, uh, not in attendance. So th there's another two guys I, I mentioned kind of 12 lineups. It, it could have gone up, up into, you know, 15, 16, once, once you start moving around uh, another couple guys. So again, I, the offensive line, we came into spring thinking that that was kind of the, the position group to watch. It continues to be that I think for the rest of spring. And like you said, yes, absolutely about, finding what Clay McGuire has to work with going into to fall camp. And there could be some answers coming out of this spring.